Hi guys, I just got back actually from Bern. Um, I went to see a play there in the city. Um, I was invited by a friend, he had an extra ticket to go see a play and I haven't gone to see a play like at a theater in a long time and that was really fun and I wanted to film a vlog actually as part of my lit chat book series that I'm doing because I recently finished a couple books and I want to talk about them before I completely forget about so them. The first book that I want to talk about is the Book Thief by Mark Suzak, and I listened to this as an audiobook. I finished this recently. It's a short read. It's um, it's a book based during like World War II in Germany, um, but it is actually for young adults. It's a it's a young adult. It's not a children's book. It's a young adult fiction. Book. Basically, the story is about Liesel. She is um, a young girl. I don't know how old she is in the book. I think it starts when she's like eight or nine or ten or something, and she comes to this family like her. It's kind of not really explained in detail but like she's brought to this like foster family because her mother this is all set during like world war ii era in germany so her mother is accused of being a communist so she was probably taken away by like the secret service because communism was like outlawed back then um so she comes into this foster family and it's just kind of her life um growing up during the World War II period, yeah. she lives with this um, foster family in like kind of a very, a very uh, poor household. Like the parents that she lives with are not, you know, very wealthy. They're kind of more like working class. The family, the foster family, actually takes in and hides a Jewish friend or something. It's like a friend of a family who's like, you know, during the Nazi period, obviously either Jews, you know, they had to go into hiding if they wanted to survive. So. Um, yeah, they take in this Jewish relative, it's not a relative, it's like a friend of the family, and he lives in their basement for like a certain amount of time. So, and it kind of, the book also talks about her relationship with this, um, this man that lives in their basement. I actually forget the name of, of the character, <laughs> but, um, yeah, she kind of forms like a very close bond with this Jewish, um, man that they're hiding. And um, it also talks about her relationship, like her friendship with another boy who lives on that street, Rudy. And how, yeah, like Rudy is like her best friend, like her partner in crime. Um, I don't want to spoil the ending, so I'm not going to tell you what happens because that will kind of give her everything away. But my overall thoughts on the book um, are that I thought it was cute. I thought it was sweet. It was like a very melancholic ending like it wasn't super happy but it wasn't like super depressing either. Know. For me personally I didn't really like that book that much because I personally am super interested in historical books from that era. Like I've read a lot of um, non-fiction books uh, based on like or from the, like the World War II period in Germany or just in Europe. Like I've read a lot of um, non-fiction books from people who lived during that time and who had like a really interesting story of their life. Since I have read so many non-fiction books like from around that time, just because it's a topic that really interests me, um, for me I just felt like I didn't really get much from a fiction book because I think the non-fiction ones are so much more interesting because it's actually like that's actually how things happened. and. Um, there's a few non-fiction books from that era that I can recommend, so I don't know, maybe I'll post them below or something, or maybe I might do a separate video on them because my own family um, from my father's side, they're German, so I mean I was, you know, I was born like not in that era, obviously, duh, but um, you know, my grandparents from my father's side, they've, you know, they're dead now, they've passed away. Um, many years ago, but they actually grew up in Germany during that time. So for me, it's kind of there's like a personal connection there, and maybe that's why I was really interested in those kind of in that kind of historical period. But if you haven't read anything from that era and you're not familiar with it, I mean, you might enjoy this book, but also I didn't really find that it didn't really shed light on a lot of the aspects of World War II, like what actually happened in Germany. Like the book doesn't really go much into detail. Yeah, there's like bombings in the book when Germany was bombed, like near the end of the war. Um, but it doesn't, I don't know, it, I just felt like the book, you, if you don't really know anything about German history or if you don't know anything about World War II in Europe, like this book isn't really gonna 
shed any light into that. The next book I wanted to talk about that I recently read is by Diana Gabaldon. Now she wrote um, this really huge series called the Outlander series and it's I don't know how many books she's written in that series. I think she's like up to book seven or eight or even more. I haven't finished the whole series um, but basically it's the story like the first book starts out um, the story of the main character, her name's Claire, and she's a nurse. She goes with her husband, I think she goes with her husband during like the 1950s or something, like shortly after the war. She and her husband go on like a honeymoon kind of trip to Scotland to just kind of revive their romance and their marriage and stuff. And while they're on that honeymoon trip to Scotland or like on that vacation trip to Scotland, she goes to this like, um, rock formation like this ruin and she passes through this rock and basically it's like time travel she goes back in time to Scotland like that in Highland in the Highlands in Scotland so she's still in Scotland but she goes back in time to like the 1800s or is, is it even 1700s I think it's 17 yeah 1700s she lands back there in the Highlands and back then um, you know I'm not too familiar with Scottish history so I don't know all the details of like how it was but um, there was all the clans like of the Scottish Highland clan. Anyhow, she she ends up staying with this one clan the Mackenzie clan and um, you know she doesn't tell them where she's from because they think she thinks that these people are gonna think she's crazy um, so but she tries her best to you know fit in with the clan and then she meets or she's like forced to marry um, this Scottish man there and his name is Jamie Fraser you know she was forced into marriage but then she totally falls in love with him and then they go on all these like trips around like all these missions and the reason I'm being so vague is because for me the book was just all over the place I, I'm not a huge fan of these books at all I actually ended up finishing the first book and then I was like, you know, I was kind of intrigued by the story, but I just didn't, like, the plot was, like, all over the place. Like, the book is really, really long. It, for me, parts of it were just so boring. Like, a lot of the times I would be reading this book, and it would just be the main character, Claire, and her husband, Jamie, either having sex in a room or talking about how much they love each other and blah, 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 and just pages and pages and pages of this. And then it just, then they would go off on some mission to, like, fight and, like, do all this stuff. But for me, the plot was just so convoluted. But somehow, the this story was kind of interesting to me because I thought okay historical fiction like I like historical fiction so I thought okay I'll, I'll read the second one in the second book um, honestly I don't remember the title of it <laughs> this is how memorable the book was to me I don't even remember the title I think it's Dragonfly on Amber or is that the third I don't remember anyway it's the second book in the series and again the plot was I can't even tell you what the book was about it was so freaking boring he ends up going, Jamie ends up being like, oh yeah, it's something to do with the restoration of the Stuart King and there's like a big war and blah 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 and so he has to escape and flee to, flee to France to hide because they want to, you know, get the other king back and like, I don't know, it's just, as you can tell, I can't even really explain the plot because I thought the book was so boring and for some stupid reason I decided to read start reading book three because someone told me that book two was really boring and that I should continue in book three because it gets so much better. I started book three and I think I think after several chapters I was like okay I'm done with this this is so boring. Nothing was happening it's just pages and pages and pages of just nothing really happening or just I don't know I mean things do happen but just the way that she writes it is not interesting so I I know a lot of people love this book series and I know some people were like raving about it and they're like oh you're gonna love it and stuff like that so if you liked it that's fine I just personally did not like it at all um, I got really bored and as I said I'm not gonna be continuing it so I guess a thumbs down for me for Diana Gabaldon Outlander series too boring too long too nothing for me. And now I started to read another book by Cormac McCarthy. I've done a book review um, for one of his books already, The Road, um, which if you want to check that out, I'll link the video below. It's one of my absolute favorite books that I have ever read. The one that I'm reading right now by Cormac McCarthy is Blood Meridian. I started reading it and again I just love his prose. He writes beautifully. He writes very poetically like a lot of just the way that he writes. It's like it's just more like poetry, like the way he just 
describes things. It's like crazy. So it's a, it's a very violent book. I haven't I haven't finished it yet, so I can't really go into too much detail yet because I'm still kind of just reading it and I, I'm still a little bit confused with the plot right now, but I'm definitely going to try and stick it out. I think that's going to be better because it seems like lately I've just been reading books that I haven't been enjoying at all. And for me, it's always just like a waste of time. Like I want to have that feeling, you know, when you read a book and it's like such a good book that you can't put it down. And it's like you read like really late into the night because you just absolutely want to know what happens. And I haven't had that feeling in so long with a book. Um, so I really want that feeling again. I want that feeling again of like really enjoying literature and just, um, you know, having a, like a real page turner that I can't put down. Yeah, that's pretty much it for books I've read lately. Um, nothing really huge that I can recommend. As I said, the books I've read just aren't, haven't really enthused me at all <laughs> recently. So maybe if you can give me some suggestions on the, on the bottom, um, comments. I like to read historical fiction. If you know any really good historical fiction that isn't too romance based, like I don't really like just romance stories too much. Um, so really good historical fiction or just like any really, really good book that you think is really worth reading. Um, put it in the comments and maybe just a little description of what it's about <laughs> because I really want to try something yeah, new. I'll see you guys soon for my next video and um, until then, take care. Bye.